Hey guys, before we get into the normal vlog, I just wanted to answer some questions that some people might have if they're intending to travel to Hong Kong, like we did. Yes. So we just want to get that out the way first. Some people might be in the same boat as us yeah. where they, they booked the trip beforehand and yeah. now they kind of have to go to Hong Kong. I think the first question is safety and is it safe to go? Yeah. In terms of safety, obviously this is a situation that's still going on and it's a protest involving thousands of people so you don't know it's very unpredictable so mm -hmm. this is purely our experience when we were there and we were there during the end of golden week so it was a pretty intense time yeah golden week if you didn't know is like the <clears throat> chinese national day yeah pretty much um and not only that we came when we came on the very day after that they announced the face mask ban. Yeah. So there was sure. some pretty big riots as well. <laughs> we couldn't have come at a worse time. Yeah. But in terms of safety, <laughs> yeah. I would say that I never felt unsafe. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I gotta say, on the weekends are when the protests are. I mean, weekdays, yeah, mainly. you probably, you can't even tell that there's something going no. on in the city that's this big of yeah. a situation. It just seems like a normal city going about their daily life um so yeah i never felt unsafe and the other thing is so we always avoided the protest but mm -hmm. then so when we were in a hotel room watching a live stream of the protest there were always tourists amongst the the protest yeah. and i'm just like these guys are crazy but it I wasn't really because yeah they did they were just strolling right through the middle of the protest yeah and they were fine <laughs> So, also, I don't condone that. First of no, all, don't let me say I don't condone. Them. Yeah, don't avoid do that. Them. You don't, don't know do what's gonna happen. Yeah. Um. So that's that's the safety done. Now, just more into how it affected our travels in general. We came on a weekend, so it was a pretty bad time to come. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there was protests, and for the whole entire weekend, the trains didn't run. Yeah. So that impacted us a little bit. Um. We had to catch a taxi to our. A hotel from the airport which usually you'd probably just get a bus that's really cheap yeah um so that's why it was a little bit costly to get the taxi but yeah. still it was only about i think about 40 australian to get to the to our hotel which yeah. i didn't mind at all bus wasn't running train wasn't running yeah um and even on normal weekdays now the trains close earlier mm -hmm. around 8 p.m mm -hmm. and that uh, because of that shops close early as well so yeah. around the same time about seven o'clock so the workers can get on the train and go yeah. home so usually everything closes around like 11 o'clock so mm -hmm. pretty late yeah instead they close around seven to eight o'clock now so that's that's all the negative stuff some positives and i just have to say now to be honest with you i feel like i don't want to say benefited because that's a bad that's a weird word to say that we benefit from this protest but it kind of only benefited Am I saying benefited from it yeah. as well? I <laughs> think you want to say the positives outweighed the negatives, I think. Yeah. For me, personally, the negatives didn't bother at me at all. Yeah. And the perks of what's going on... <laughs> this sounds can't... really bad. <laughs> yeah. This sounds really bad. <laughs> I'm sorry to the Hong Kong situation, everybody in this situation. But to be honest, look, I'm just going to be straight up. It did only benefit our trip because the hotels were dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. So we, so usually the hotel we stayed at was about over $250 mm. and a night, yeah. yeah, per night and instead it only cost about 50 something dollars. We were able to get a nicer hotel because the prices dropped so much. Mm -hmm. We were going to have to stay at a worse hotel. Yeah. A worse, a worse hotel. Um, so the hotel, we saved hundreds of dollars on the hotel. And the other thing is, usually the places that you go to eat, and one of the main reasons you go to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. um, those busy, busy restaurants with lines out the doors, no lines anymore. I still got to say and recommend people if to not go to Hong Kong if they're just thinking about <laughs> going there, because it, it's not a good time to go, no. full stop. But if you were to go, like we had to, and we were planning to, to be honest with you, there was a lot of unexpected positives. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. And we were able to get for cheap hotels and get into restaurants quicker. And yeah, um, I, think, um, I didn't even care about the negatives, really. No. It didn't bother me at all. We weren't, yeah. we were always able to go places that we wanted to. Anyway, guys, that's just our experience. So, and as of this time period, 
Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen, obviously. It's such yeah. a crazy thing that's happening. Um, stay safe if you have to come. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the people of Hong Kong. Anyway, we're going to get into the normal vlog now. So in case you want to see what actually we got up to and to see firsthand how and if the protests really affected it. Yeah. Here we go. We just landed in Hong Kong, waiting for our bags at the moment. Let's hope everything goes smoothly. Yesterday they just released a law that masks are banned for the protest. So my friend who lives in Hong Kong was like, there's probably going to be more protests whilst we're here. Yeah. But I hope everything goes smoothly. Feeling the first few effects of the protest. So the trains don't go to our area. And we thought we'd be able to attach the bus there, but looks like the one bus that we need is closed where all the other buses are running. We're going to try and catch the train to one of the stations that's open and then catch a cab, hoping that's cheaper. Okay, so it's not cheaper. It costs $30 to get into the station that's still far away from our stop, whereas the Uber to our hotel will only cost us $41. Yeah. So we may as well. So far, it's looking pretty normal. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Unbelievable. It's protests here before? Yeah. <laughs> oh. So we're lucky, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow is a Hong Kong holiday. Yeah, the yeah. last day, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So they will come out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. My stress headache is gone. I was so scared. Don't you? I know. Not really. Well, when we got in, he's like, there's a protest going on right now. I don't know if I'll be able to get to your hotel. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to have to walk the streets in a protest. All right, let's see what the hotel room is like. Usually hotel rooms in Hong Kong are really small and cramped, unless you pay a lot of money. But this hotel was pretty cheap because obviously the protests right now. So that's a perk of going to Hong Kong at the moment. Um, yeah, we, um, we already had a hotel booked before the protest started. And then when it started, we canceled, booked this one and saved over 50%. First of all, this room is still very small. <laughs> I thought it'd be bigger to be honest with you, but let's, I'll show you. Coming in through the door, there's a little hallway. There's a Nikita. Oh, hello. And then the bed. There's not much room for the bed to the TV. But it's really nice and clean, which is the main thing. Have a nice shower. Nice shower. But the toilet's a bit like... Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go get some food now because the streets are looking pretty normal when we came in from the taxi. So far, the streets are super quiet. Kind of hard to believe that there was a protest here just before. 7-Eleven's closed. 7-Eleven's closed, the heck? Okay, thank you. We've been walking around trying to find a 7-Eleven, but they're all closed due to the protest, like most restaurants are closed. So we just found this little street food thing and I got waffles for dinner. Oh. I got the goods. And my waffle. <laughs> Back in the hotel room now. We didn't get anything special for dinner because lots of restaurants are closed right now, as you might expect. I got these cheese balls. I don't know what it is. The picture made it look like almost like marshmallows. Yeah. Look at these. Look at these. These are apparently cheese balls. They kind of look and feel more like fish balls. Oh, they're squishy as. Oh, did you guys hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Mm. It's like a it's like a fish ball with mm. cheese in the center of it. That's what I got the greasiest fried chicken. The paper bag has gone transparent. I got a fried chicken and waffles. All right, I just really wanted to show you guys the cheese balls. So um, we're gonna finish our food and see what Hong Kong's like tomorrow. Hopefully it's good. Hopefully it doesn't affect our travels. Um, Ciao everybody. Hopefully the train's open, hey. Hey everybody, it's day two and take two of trying to go to the Australian Dairy Company. Yeah. Hopefully it's open today. Yesterday it was a public holiday. I don't think it was closed because of protests. So let's prepare ourselves and mentally prepare ourselves because apparently they can be pretty rude and pushy. Like they just want you to eat your food and get the fuck out and they yell at you and stuff. What? what it's true. That's not very Australian. <laughs> so prepare yourself, mm. all right? You guys too. Oh, I can see it's open today. No line as well, for obvious reasons. 
So that's a perk of going to right now. I don't know why it tastes so good because it's so simple, but it does taste really damn good. Like it's... <laughs> I don't think you'll ever find a more perfect scrambled egg. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's try the French toast now. It's so buttery. There's like just a layer of melted butter on top. Let's try. Mmm. Maybe because I'm not a person who likes French toast, but it's just whatever. But the scrambled eggs, they're delicious. Should I try the French toast? I mean, it's all right. It's not amazing. It's finished. We're outside now. You can't really talk in there because yeah, it's so on. loud and you just got to eat and pretty much leave. I want to eat here again. I'm just saying <laughs> that the scrambled eggs are really, really good and perfect. Yeah. But I reckon I could make it at home. I think that I know what the secret is. What? Just use a shitload of butter. That's what it is. Oh yeah, they have butter everything. A lot of butter yeah. and cook it slow. But otherwise, you're gonna go out for breakfast. It's a really good spot. They're like unnecessarily rude. Like they bang the knife and fork on the table. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't say they're rude, but they're really cold. I don't. I think <laughs> for like the service industry, you would consider them rude. Beyond. No. Yeah. Just, it's not like they're having a bad day. It's just I think they're purposely trying to be rude. Like. It was so rude. I don't know. That's just maybe that's just how Hong Kong people are. We just got off the pier to Central and we're heading to a place called Tim Ho Wan, which is a very famous dim sum place known for its Michelin star and I'm meeting up with an old friend of mine so let's go find Tim Ho Wan and my friend What the hell? Why are you so muscly now? How are you? <laughs> Our friend Samson is helping us and people are scared of him because his arms are so big <laughs> so then no waiters will be rude to us today because his arms are so big I was trying to be nice and say the waiters were just um, not that mean and it's just the culture but even my friend he says they're rude <laughs> this is char still bao it smells really sweet it's good yeah i love it it's so sweet and nice it is i'm porky what's this one called Chongy? no you no no you can't say that my friend's name's Chong Lee, so I call him Chongy. Oh, and the kid is like, you can't call him that on camera. Chong. You're that's the one that's being racist. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's um, barbecue pork in a rice wrap. It's okay, but the wrap is pretty bland. Bland? I, yeah, I need like sauce on it or vinegar. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We're just at Victoria Peak and there's like a wild hog or pig or something here. What, is, what animal is that? Yeah, it's a boar. It's a boar. This is the most random thing that I've ever seen happen in so many countries. <laughs> this poor cleaner lady just chased off the boar. She's so fearless, but she's angry because the, the boar knocked over the bins and just ran after it. That lady's got some balls, man. Like me, David, Akram, they're like friends how we were. You right there? Yep. We've just been chilling at Victoria Peak. Reminiscing about old times. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> now we're going to Mong Kok, maybe to get some food just in time for dinner. See, this one is called Guangdong Road. It's Guangdong where Road. all the you know top tier. Ah. Uh, so that's why all the Chinese tourists are here. Do you think it's? See how empty it is here, guys. Samson says usually it's so busy here because there's all the Chinese tourists. Like it's just completely packed. So it's a good time to come to Hong Kong. Kind of. If you have to come, it actually is a good time to come to Hong Kong. <laughs> Hotels are cheap. There's no lines for busy restaurants that are usually like really busy. Samson is going to take us to something called Hong Kong fast food. But it's not like Western food, is it? No. It's still like proper food and stuff, I think. 
Samson, where are you taking us to eat, man? This doesn't look right. Trust you? Alright. This must be really where the locals go to eat or something. First plate of food's come out, and when Samson was ordering, we were like, oh, just maybe get us some normal stuff, because he wanted to get a whole bowl of pig blood. And the first plate has come out. I'm like, what is it? And he's like, oh, there's some pig intestine there. There's some goose intestine there. Some pig's ear. I don't mind pig's ear. I eat pig's ear. But there's a lot of intestine. And he got a whole plate of intestine. Oh, and we we're going to get roast pigeon, which I wanted to, but then I didn't have any left, sadly. Normal. So is this the ear? Yeah. yeah. Pig's ear is actually pretty nice. <laughs> oh, no, you don't like Which? it. Why is it hard? There's a, like a um, cartridge <laughs> between the, uh, the soft meat. Got some ear. It is a lot harder the cartilage than I'm used to. And what's this one, Samson? This is goose intestine. If this is. It's crunchy. This is crunchy. It looks so soft. If this is what Samson thinks is normal food, I hate to see what he eats. It's not bad. It kind of tastes like skin. You know, like skin. It's like rubbery skin almost, but it's intestine. The thought that it was goose liver put me off, but it's actually not bad. Intestines. Oh, goose intestines. This is pork intestine. This pork intestine actually looks kind of gross, not gonna lie. Let's try some <laughs> pork intestine. Okay, I try it too. Well, oh, okay, maybe not. <laughs> no, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just, it's really pungent. It's almost like the fat of pork, but really gamey and like, um, it's pungent. Oh, okay. oh, it's your favorite. Yeah, I don't mind that one. It kind of is like pig, pig fat. So Samson's ordered enough food for like a family of ten people. There's one more coming. Oh, there's one more coming. Oh my god. He's gotta eat all of this to maintain his size. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sir. He says he has to eat uh, 20,000 calories per day, otherwise he'll uh, lose muscle mass. This one looks really interesting. That's, uh, what's it again? Oyster pancake. Oyster pancake, yum. Mm, interesting. Go for a bigger one, what are you doing? I just want a little taste, man. I'll put it in the fish sauce, yeah? A little taste. It looks like... It's like, um... It's just like breaded oyster. I like how they fried oyster. Yeah, like, yeah. Is it panko or what do they use as a coating, do you know? Yeah. Not sure. It, it tastes like panko crumbs, mm. but it probably isn't because I don't think Chinese would use breadcrumbs, would they? No. It's just not breadcrumbs. Yeah. This is a uh, sticky spare ribs with lychee sauce or something. Ow. Mmm. It tastes like really good. Sweet and sour pork or something, but really good. Hey everybody, we finished up lunch, I mean dinner with Samson and that man has a heart of gold. He, he gave us a whole bag of snacks. <laughs> First of all, he rocked up when he met us with the backpack on and I thought he'd been to the gym or something. No, it was just so he could carry this big ass bag of snacks that he'd gotten us. Um, and then he paid for our dinner and he wouldn't let us pay. And then he walked us home. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you don't live here. <laughs> he lives nowhere near where we're staying. Like nowhere near, walks us home. Anyway, thank you, Samson. Thank you, Samson. It was very sad to leave you. And that is our time in Hong Kong. We will see you guys next time.